The NBA is currently full of young talent. There is the cream of the crop with guys like Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum, and Kristaps Porzingis. These are the players who get drafted high and burst onto the scene in dominant fashion from the moment they step onto the court. But then there are countless other players that slot into that pick 5 to 20 range. They are clearly talented, but take some time to adjust to the grind and challenges of the NBA. There are plenty of guys that fall into this category. Lonzo Ball, Jalen Brown, Brandon Ingram, Buddy Heald in his first two seasons, and even Giannis took time to develop into the MVP candidate he is today. But sometimes, we as fans forget this. We can become impatient and demand that they are traded, declare that they are busts, and cry out asking why our team's general managers ever thought that they would be good. But we need to remember to take a step back, and remember that for these younger guys, this takes time. This video is going to focus on the New York Knicks in order to highlight this problem. It will do so by first taking a look at Kevin Knox, a player who struggled immensely in the first stretch of the season before showing the enormous potential he has once again. Fans and journalists were writing Knox off to begin the season, calling him soft and a bust before he had even played 20 games. And now, he looks strong, confident and like one of the better young wings in the NBA. Then, the video will turn to look at Frank Nilakina, a player that I have been high on since he has been drafted, but who has seemingly struggled ever since then as well. Frank is probably one of the most polarizing players amongst New York Knicks fans. Many think that he will never be able to run a team as a point guard, while others think he is one of the best defenders in the league, with solid offensive upside. But before we delve into exactly what kind of a player Frank is, let us start by taking a closer look at Kevin Knox. In the summer league, Knox looked fantastic. He was bigger, faster, and stronger than most of the other wings he was matched up on, and used this to get into the paint and score through contact. If this was all he did, I would have likely written it off as just summer league, but he also showed shooting and scoring ability that looked like it would translate against any competition. He was burying deep three-point shots off of both the catch and the pull-up, and was doing this over outstretched arms and in clutch situations. He was also hitting mid-range shots, was running the pick and roll well, and generally just looked like an all-around strong offensive player. Alongside the play of Mitchell Robinson in Summer League, this had Knicks fans hyped as hell. They thought that they had nailed the draft and were set for the future with a stock of young talent. And let's be clear, I still think they definitely are. But to start the season, Knicks fans would have been disappointed. Robinson hardly saw the floor, and when he did, he was in immediate foul trouble and Knox only made 12 of his first 39 shots, and looked extremely bothered by the length of NBA defenders, and as if he struggled with the game. But here's the thing, this was 5 games, this was just the start of the season. You can't make judgments on these guys until the end of the year, and even the end of their second and third years, until that they have had the advantage of playing more than just a handful of NBA games. Mitch Robinson has gone on to have some incredible games, blocking 7 shots in 1, and showing why he has the potential to become one of the best shot blocking, rim protecting bigs in the game. And while he still fouls and gets caught out of position a lot, these are things that can be worked on, kinks that can be ironed out over the course of many seasons. And then there is Kevin Knox, the player that Knicks fans were really disappointed in. The New York Post wrote an article calling Knox soft after just his 16th NBA game. Even though in these 16 games, he had 7 games scoring over 10 points, and had shown flashes of strong potential. Well, Knox appeared to take the words and outside motivation of the post to heart. In his next game, he would come out guns blazing, scoring 26 points, dishing 4 assists, draining 5 threes, and beating the Milwaukee Bucks, one of the best teams in the East by 2 points. It was a coming out party for Knox and a reminder that you shouldn't judge rookies on small sample sizes, especially that first 19 games on a struggling team. Following that 26 point outing, Knox has gone on to average 17 points and 6 rebounds a game while dishing out 1.5 assists and shooting 37.6% from 3. He is still struggling a little bit shooting from the field overall, but this is a natural product of playing on a bad team and not having too many other options. Knox has become the secondary option and even the primary option on the Knicks at times, and learning to deal with this is going to take time. At times he probably shoots when he is too covered, or takes layup attempts when he is way too deep into the paint. But these things will smooth over. 
the more he takes these poor shots, the more he will know that they don't work and look to get to better spots on the floor. When he does get to good spots on the floor, he has looked so solid. He has a wicked pull-up game off of the pick and roll and looks confident knocking down those little 16-footers as well as three-point shots. I also really like his play in the pick and roll in general. He comes around the screens hard and attacks the paint using his length, speed, and strength to get into the defense and pass the big man to a wide-open hoop. He also does the same things off of pin-down screens, and when the Knicks guards hit him off of these in rhythm, he has looked super solid. Kevin Knox really just looks like a guy who was born to score. He is long with a good shooting touch, quick, and has the strength to score through contact. This showed during his time in college, and it is showing now after a tough stint to start the season. And this is why you don't give up on rookies and young players. Sure, there are things Knox can still work on. His efficiency is stated and his passing and his defense. The passing front is tough, and I don't expect a first-year 6'9 wing to come out diming. Players like Luka Doncic don't grow on trees. But if he is to become an all-star wing, he will eventually need to learn how to do this. Kevin draws a lot of attention in the paint and frequently gets doubled and even tripled when he gets under the basket. Here, he needs to learn how to make the quick dump-off pass to his big man or the alley-oop. Both of these passes will allow him to create points for his team and his hard-working big men. It will also prevent him from turning the ball over too much and give his coach more confidence in him being the first or second option. The second pass he really needs to work on is the kick-out pass to the corner or the wings for an open three when the defense cheats too much. Both of these passes are relatively simple or sound relatively simple but NBA-level defenses are fast, and you need to make split-second reads. If you can't make them or a little late, the pass becomes way too telegraphed, and good defenses will make you pay. This will be a work in progress for Knox, and will come, and this season is the perfect one to do it. As the Knicks aren't focused on winning, and can ride the turnovers Knox will have, as he learns to pass at an NBA level. But the Knicks will be hoping that Knox's defensive woes are just due to not winning. Knox isn't terrible at defense, but at times he gets overzealous and overplays, and then at other times he is lackadaisical and easily beaten. Kevin does have his moments on the defensive end, and definitely has the athleticism and wingspan to become a positive defender. It will just be about developing good habits and a consistent mindset to that side of the court. One player the Knicks don't have to worry about on the defensive side of the court is Frank Nilekina. The young Frenchman was drafted number 8 last year and has had a similar story throughout his NBA career to date. Defensive wizardry and offensive struggles, the opposite of most young NBA players. But these offensive struggles have been accompanied with flashes of brilliance. For these reasons, I feel that some Knicks fans are way too harsh on their young point guard. People have labelled him a bust just 100 games into his career, forgetting the fact that he is only 20 years old and is 6 foot 5. Both of these things tend to slow the development of any point guard. Younger guards struggle as they don't have as much experience running teams and creating their own shot consistently. And then for taller guards, things can be even harder. The dribble is higher and this means it can be easier to disrupt their flow and offense with pressured defense. And at times, this has been a problem for Frank. When teams push up on him, he doesn't always try and drive past and get to his spots. Frequently, he would just pass the ball off to Knox or Hardaway and allow them to end the possession instead. But I think this points to a different kind of problem than his age or height. Frank doesn't have the confidence in himself to perform this attacking role. He sees himself as the facilitator for players like Knox and Hardaway, and when he is healthy, Porzingis. But with the first two, both are wings who are currently very scoring-focused players. The distribution isn't reciprocated towards Frank, and they merely use him as a release valve 3 when they get into extreme trouble. For this reason, I've enjoyed when Frank has been playing on the bench since Knox moved in with the starters. In this time, Frank has had the ball in his hands for a few games, and in some of them he has really delivered, such as when he dropped 18 points on Charlotte and 16 points and 4 assists on Cleveland in limited minutes. These games show Frank has the potential, and I think it is truly there. He probably won't show it completely for a few years, but it remains under the surface, arriving in a few moments, a few games. He can shoot threes, drive, pull up, and most importantly, he can pass well to big man. And this is one of the least spoken about things with Frank's season. He's been playing entirely without Porzingis. He and KP showed great chemistry in the short time they played together. 
Frank was fantastic at playing pick and roll and pick and pop with KP for one main reason. He looked to pass first. Frank was completely aware that KP was the first option and would hit him with on-time and on-point bounce passes and lobs in the paint, as well as wraparound passes to him on the three-point line. He also knew when the defense was giving him too much and wasn't afraid to take his shot then. But it was only when he was required to shoot and he played his role perfectly. And for this reason, I think he is much more suited to playing with KP than guys like Moutier or Trey Burke. Both of these guys look to attack for themselves and really only pass when the defense collapses onto them. They aren't as adept at prioritizing other options on the team and Frank will be invaluable at setting up Knox, KP and the other young stud they draft this year. The other area Frank will be invaluable on is the defensive end. You can say what you like about him as an offensive player, but on the defensive side of the court, he is a monster. Frank is so long, fast laterally, and has some of the most natural defensive instincts I've ever seen, especially for a point guard. He has shown the ability to lock down both shooting and point guards, and this will be invaluable for any future Knicks teams that has championship aspirations. There is only one basketball on the offensive end, but there are five players to guard on the other. You can hide offensively weaker players, and Frank will be able to set up whichever teammate or action they are running, and then space the floor with threes, something he's getting better at. Then, Porzingis, Knox, Hardaway, or even RJ Barrett will handle the bulk of the offense. But there are so many amazing point guards in the NBA, and none of the other Knicks can guard them, and you can't hide players on defense. Frank can guard them. He can guard almost any wing, any guard, and that is where his true value lies. So don't count him out just yet. He might surprise you like Kevin Knox surprised the New York Post. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications as well, and let me know in the comments what you think of Knox, Nilakina, and the Knicks future.